the previous video, we talked about and played Batman Flash games. So today, it's only fitting that we shift towards the webhead himself, Spider-Man. Make sure to watch until the end to find out how Spider-Man Flash games still evolves, even to this day. Now, unlike Batman, there are many Spider-Man Flash games there are movie tie-in used as promotional material to boost interest for the film. A lot of these games you access through the official movie websites. There are other sites and developers who made their own unofficial Spider-Man games, which can result in either a total disaster or a really creative and brilliant games, and some ridiculous ones. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the games in two different categories. First, the unofficial games, and second, the movie tie-in games. As before, if you wanna try these games out yourself, you can use the program Flashpoint Archive or Numuki.com. There are many other sites that can still access Flash games, but these are the ones that I recommend. Put the link in the description below. And with that said, let's get on with it. Spider-Man City Drive we're gonna start off with a motorcycle trial game. Crazy concept for Spider-Man. Spider-Man didn't need to ride a motorcycle. He web swings through buildings. But of course, with Flash games, you gotta put every character in a BMX trial game. So as Spider-Man, you drive his motorcycle through the roof of New York. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. What's with these windows? Every room is the same PNG of people eating. So in this game, you only have 3 lives. And notice that the motorcycle had 3 different paint jobs. White, blue, and orange. Not much to say in this, unlike this next one. Spider-Man Dangerous Journey. What can I say about this game? It is... A buggy mess, to say the least. Let's start off with a bicycle trial stage. Controls is very simple. Press the arrow key to the right, and the bike pedals. The sound it makes when you crash is... Well, interesting. I always encounter this glitch, where the ground just disappears. As you get to the next stage, is a boss fight. Rakuten? Is this a monster from the comics? I never heard of him. So you just jump around its head and the left or right side of the ground. You basically want to lure him by going to his head and make him strike himself in the head. Just like that scene from Incredibles. Once defeated, you get to the final stage. You surf the monster down the hill while these rocks are thrown at you. But personally, I couldn't finish this stage because the rocks kept hitting me. And it's impossible to avoid, like, where's the space? between the rocks is unpredictable but this is the final stage so after this you're done so do you notice anything bizarre with this game spider-man riding a bike glitches the random monster randomly named Rakuten. before i answer i want to play another game it's called the life and times of juniper lee party interrupted okay this is another bike game whoa this game seems familiar oh wait it's the exact same game they literally copy this Juniper Lee game, made changes to the character model, background, the music, the sound effects. It explains the bugs and glitches this game have. But it turns out the glitches were already there from the Juniper Lee game. So they just literally copy this game and carry along the glitches and the bugs and everything. Good job, of funny games. You guys really live up to your name. Really funny. Truly hilarious. Like this next game. Spider-Man City Raid. Oh, what can I say about this one? It's bad. It's frustrating. Maybe because I suck in this game. So this is a point and click web swinging game. Admit the music, but originally it plays Black Betty by Ram Jam. What's the significance? Don't know. Just a fun rock music to pump you up while playing this stupid game. Yeah, look at this Spider-Man model. It's so wiggly woggly, like a fish. Is this a stickman version of Spider-Man? Controls are really bad. It's hard to describe. So you point your mouse at an object, but the web didn't even go to where your mouse points. The web length is very inconsistent. Sometimes it shoots far, sometimes it doesn't. So maybe it's by chance. But I still don't get how the web works. What gets it far? Is it how far your cursor aims? Or how long you click? There are two versions of this game. The other one is where you play the symbiote, titled Spider-Man Darkseid. The difference are the platform shapes and the game's background. Why is the background here lighter than the normal one? I thought this is supposed to be the Darkseid version. So this is the farthest I went in this game. I know there are many people out there who already speedrun this game easily on YouTube. But I am not one of them. I cannot play this game anymore. The Amazing Spider-Man by Andrew Rose. 
the objective of this game is you collect Batman t-shirts, Spider-Man t-shirts, or these Green Lantern t-shirts, and boxers without falling into traffic. The controls is straightforward, like the previous game, just point and web. And here, the web actually goes to where the cursor points this time. Thank god. You can speedrun through the entire level by just clicking really fast without collecting the other clothes. Clothes only determine your score, and the only one that matters is the holy Optimus Prime t-shirt that will advance you to the next level. Why Optimus Prime? Doesn't matter. You can access the city map by clicking on the top right. Just not really a map, it's just a use of binoculars to see the buildings ahead. There are 5 levels. After that, you complete the game. Sandman Tower Technically, this one is official. It was published by Hasbro. This one is pretty unique. Instead of a 2D, 3D, or PNG animation, they use action figures. So this is a stop-motion game. There's not much games using stop-motion anymore. Or movies for that matter. Some indie publishers does make stop-motion games. But it's a very rare occasion. I'm curious on how a big studio with big budget can utilize this in a game. So yeah, this game is very special. This is a promotional material for Spider-Man 3 toys. Your objective is to climb your way up this tower. The Sandman Tower. To defuse the bomb that's on top in less than 7 minutes. While avoiding electric windows, clues, and villains like Lizard, Green Goblin, Rhino, Doc Ock, Phantom, and of course the title character himself, Sandman. Also you collect these score coins. With blue you get 50 points, red you get 75 points. Be careful with the minus 500 points. You can use spacebar and the arrow keys to left or right. Collect circles beside the buildings. Symbiote transformation, which transforms Spider-Man into the black suit. With this, you are technically invincible. You just crawl your way through all the obstacles, and when you crawl through the villains, you beat them up instead of them beating you. Why can't the normal Spidey do this? Regardless, level 3 is the final one. Once you get to the top, you successfully defeat the bomb, and the city is safe. Unlike the city of our next game. So now we get to the movie tie-ins. I'll review these games in order so you can see the evolution. Starting with Doc Ock Rampage. The title mainly says it all. Rampage. Destroy the city. It's like Rampage World Tour on PS1 where you climb buildings and destroy it one by one. The scale of size is so off with this one. Why is Doc Ock like 3 stories tall? And the cops is like 2 stories tall. So your objective is to destroy as many buildings as you can. Os tentacles destroy one window in one hit. First, you might find it tricky to climb. See, you have to make Doc's tentacles cling into the building before you climb. But I find an easier trick is to just press both up and the direction you want to go. You'll instantly cling to the building and go up. Police brings more heat as the level goes up. Just like in GTA with the 1 level progression. And at level 4 or 5, they bring so many helicopters. So exactly like in GTA. Cops shoot at you with what appears to be red rubber bullets. At least, that's what it looks like. Each bullet hit will cost you 10 health, and you only have 3 lives. When you destroy their cars, there's this kaboom text effect, akin to the 1966 Batman. So this game is endless, it just determines how many scores you get before the cops beat you. Oh, speaking about beating Doc Ock, Spider-Man 2, Word of Words. This is really creative, you're playing word scramble game, sort of like a test that you fight in elementary school. Or a game of Scrabble. Each correct word will get Spider Man to climb the building. The longer the words you get, the higher Spider Man would climb. And when you get to the top, you get into this duel with Doc Ock. In a word completion games, which is my opinion easier, fill in the words correctly and you attack Doc Ock. Put in the wrong word and he attacks you instead. You're back to another climbing stage, but it gets faster. And in the later stage, there are fewer vowels, and you gotta get the vowels. If you get too much consonant, then you are screwed. So overall, it's a good game for kids to play, even for adults. You can actually learn language and letters with a Spider-Man theme. Spider-Man 3, The Ultimate Challenge The game feels like a dance competition with Venom, or a turn-based strategic operations game where you move one step at a time until you reach the enemy. Now, I cannot play the full version of this game, as it didn't load the game after I enter my name. Maybe it needs to connect to an online service that doesn't exist anymore. So I can only play the practice version. Let's move on to the next game. Spider-Man 3 Photo Hunt 
In this game, you're working for the Daily Bugle to photograph Spider-Man. So you arrive in this scene and Spider-Man just moves around really fast. If you look closely, it's a PNG from Spider-Man 3 marketing posters. In every scene, there is a small marker that if you click, you get the hidden scenes where you can photograph Goblin, Phantom, or Sandman. Gotta say, the Venom scene is pretty dope compared to the others. With the old wooden house and the horror lightings, it really fits Venom vibes. When you're done, you have to pick one photo from each three stages. If you got the characters in frame no matter how messy it is, then it's guaranteed headlight. If you don't, then Jameson, in his own words, Fire! Spider-Man 3 Spider Launch Catapult Game You launch Spider-Man up to reach the target on the other side. The arrow determines the power of the launch. Lower means less power, and higher for more power. Every stage you are treated to this scoreboard like bowling. But who am I playing with? Who is Par? Playing the same game as you are. Also, I don't know what determines the points of each stage. Maybe the accuracy of Spider-Man landings. The next stages, there are symbiote Spider-Man balloons that you can utilize as momentum builder to launch you to the target. Also, there are blimps in the skies that will push you back or forward depending on your position when hitting the blimp. These hot air balloons too will bounce you far up the skies. This game scale also didn't make sense, just like Doc Ock Rampage. And when you reach the end, the scoreboard pops up, and my score is one point above par. I still don't understand what determines the score. Let's get to the next one, to rescue Mary Jane. Spider-Man 3, Rescue Mary Jane. This had the same animation and character model as the previous game, but why are we using poles? on buildings instead of webs? Regardless, our objective, like the title said, is to rescue Mary Jane. Along the way, Goblin and Venom stand in your way, and if you touch them, you will fall. Don't worry though, there are no health bars, so you can fall as many times as you want. You can even use falling as your advantage to fall and get to the next screen immediately. So at the end of each three stages, you find MJ trapped in Venom's web. But why are there three different Mary Janes? The multiverse? Each level has a time limit. When you reach the finish, you turn it to the end screen where they put links to watch interviews for the film. So this is not the game that I used to play often. As the gameplay is not very eventful, there's no battle, the villains just stands and fly around and waits for you to get close to them. This game was kinda popular before Spider-Man 3 hits theaters. Speaking about battles, Spider-Man 3 The Battle Within the whole game is a cinematic QTE, just like in Spider-Man 3 video game. There are two types of point circles. Aiming circles by accurately pointing the spider logo in the middle, or power meter, where you wait for these spurs to fill up and get the perfect defense. You can be slightly outside the circle, or go higher with the bars to get symbiote power. I think for me this is a clever idea for the mechanics part, so they make it easier using the symbiote power as the symbiote is more powerful. The first level's opponent is Goblin. This follows the fight scene at the beginning of the movie between Peter and Harry. But in this one, he's already in the symbiote suit. The goblin throws bombs at you, try to use goblin blades. In the end, you just trap him with his own bombs, and then he got away. The next level is Sandman in the subway. This is more accurate to the movie. It's just the whole same gameplay. You beat him up by pouring waters at him. If you use too much symbiote power, you cannot advance to the next level, where Spidey is in his normal suit fighting Venom. But if you didn't know, you can enter a password on the menu screen of Venom spelled backwards. So let's type M O. N -E -V. And there you go. The Venom stage is more difficult as you can't use the symbiote power, so you have to be more accurate with the aim circles and the power meter. The ending is Venom throwing a tractor at you while he gets away. Congratulations, you have helped Spidey win his battle against Venom. What do you mean he got away? The Amazing Spider Man Online Movie Game. At the start, you are treated to this Sony ad video, which I gotta admit, it's a cool commercial. There's Nathan Drake, Crash Bandicoot and other Sony products. The spider art in the menu is very cool. It really hypes you to play the game. It's a beat-em up side-scroller game. The primary attack is pressing spacebar. Peter performs boxing moves. In each level, you unlock a special move called the superhero move, which is acquired by defeating certain enemies. These moves are used for vaulting over and sliding under obstacles, jump to buildings, and use superhero move on enemies that will do a one-hit kill. There are four levels. In level 1 to 3, Peter is still in the vigilante costume, and you get the Spider-Man outfit in the 4th level. Each 4 level has its own sets of superhero moves, each consisting of 4 moves. To perform this, press 1, 2, 3, and 4 number keys on enemies, obstacles, or buildings. Level 1 consists of flip moves. Level 2 are web swings and grabs. Level 3 is more of higher backflips for jump leaps between the buildings. 
Level 4 are backward jumping, side faulting, and a superman punch for attack. Level 1, 2, 3 is basically the same. Same villains, same rooftop layouts. You can recover some items and return into civilians who are also conveniently standing on the roofs waiting for you. Sometimes you can miss these items as there are construction levels below the rooftops. Level 4 is the most different. You can immediately tell by the change of time. Now it's night time to indicate that we're getting serious. Near the end of the level, you got to the bridge and about to fight the lizard. Treat to this third person cutscene of Spider-Man swinging down until he reaches the lizard. So you just follow him. Sometimes the lizard will turn back to attack you and also throw vehicles. But it's easily avoidable. You just have to use your superhero moves until you reach him. But the attacks on the lizard are pretty much useless. You just gotta follow him until you reach the end and trigger this cutscene. save the civilians and the laser got away. You know, I noticed the pattern in the Spider-Man movie games are the villains always got away. I guess they want to keep you hanging until you watch the movie to be continued because they are advertising it through these games. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 Endless Swing You know what this is. The infamous Wii game. The title describes the whole premise of the game. Spider-Man just automatically swings and you just control his movements vertically or horizontally. So there are two indicators here. Lose for health, which will deplete if you hit the screens or buildings. The red one is for web fluids. If you don't collect these fluids, you run out of webs and you will fall. Here's what baffles everyone at the time. Every time you collect three or more fluids, Spider-Man just screams. I don't know getting web fluids can be this exciting. But to give the game credit, this game has decent animations. Actually, not really. What's with this pause before shooting the webs? It also has accurate costumes with the film. Unlike the console version of the game, the city below is filled with cars, so it feels kinda alive. But it gets really boring and repetitive. And that woo, I just can't stand it. The human ears can only handle so many woos before you go insane. It just convinces you to not get the fluids, so he doesn't do the woo and just let him die. So this is obviously not a game that I will be playing over and over, as it just gets boring and there's nothing much to do with it. Even the first Amazing Spider-Man game had more to do, and the woo from hell is unbearable. This is more fit to be a mobile game, like Batman v Superman who will win. But still, that woo should be removed from Earth immediately. After this, Sony didn't stop with their interactive marketing of the Spider-Man movies. We all know about the Spider-Man mobile games, the console games, and the other countless version which are completely different from each other. By the time Spider-Man enters the MCU with Spider-Man Homecoming, they still do these kinds of interactive marketings for the movies, just in a different way. Which is what we're getting to now with the Spider-Man Homecoming app. Spider-Man Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home app. We we'll start off with Homecoming. It's an app where you can access Peter's phone, find emojis of the film, and photo filters. This app is updated along with the movies coming out. The latest version that you can find in the App Store and Play Store is a No Way Home version. With these apps, you'll be able to access Peter's phone gallery, looking at photos he took during the events of the film. It feels like looking at someone's phone gallery, and it just feels wrong. Photographs MJ and Nat and class. Well, this one is the theater show in Far From Home that we don't see. And I love the continuity detail. In the Homecoming version, we got photos of Liz, which is deleted in the Far From Home version. Just like the text messages, Liz's text, and Tony Stark's, you can't find those in the Far From Home version. You can also access voicemails and messages to sort out Peter's activities before the events of the film. It's sort of an ARG. The video taps are just Peter self-recording before the events of Civil War that we saw in the beginning of Homecoming. In the No Way Home version, all texts and messages are gone. The UI is also different. I don't remember him changing phones in the film, but maybe he did it after he was revealed as Spider-Man. But the highlight of these apps are the AI Suit Explorer. It's what they advertise. Using your camera, scan a flat surface, and put a facial Spider-Man. In the homecoming version, he clings onto the walls. Mine's glitchy because the surface is too small. There are two suit choices, homemade and the Stark suit. It's easier to find an area in the No Way Home version, as Spider-Man will just stand on the ground or wrap upwards. You can also adjust the position and size, so you can make Spider-Man into an Ant-Man size or a monster size. 
Some people might think these apps were unnecessary, but I think it's a great promotional contents for the films. And you can have fun with the AR and PR's phone. It's a rare occasion that a movie has these kinds of promotional apps. And this is an obvious evolution for the movie Flash games. The latest one at that. So, Spider-Man Flash games, what do you think? The unofficial one is what you get when you have free reign over a famous character. You have the ones that are complete doctors and the ones that are very good, but even the official games have some questionable entries. As before, there are many Spider-Man Flash games that I could regret into one video, as the video would get too long if it wasn't long already, so I'll cover the other games in a future video. If you're interested in other Flash games, check out my previous video which is about Batman Flash games. And those of you who made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.